I think we'll go ahead and get started. I've got a lot to cover, uh, so we'll, we'll just launch right into it. Uh, welcome to Help, I'm a Flow Admin Who Needs to Learn Data Cloud. Uh, my name is Mark Ross. I'm a Curriculum Development Senior Lead for Trailhead. I work for Salesforce. I write Trailhead content. Specifically, what that title means is I'm in charge of a certain area of Trailhead content. And for me, that's Flow Builder. Uh, so essentially, if you see a Flow Builder badge, there's a good chance I wrote it, or at the very least, I need to rewrite it, uh, or I've at least put my eyeballs on it, right? So uh, who am I exactly? Why am I here? Uh, so I actually was an admin before I was a writer for many, many, many years, and I cut my teeth on Flow. I learned it starting back in 2010, when it was literally an executable that you ran on your Windows or Mac machine and saved files, that you Flow files that you then uploaded to Salesforce. Crazy times. Um, but I've basically made a name for myself in the community and became a Salesforce MVP by getting the word out about Flow, Flow Builder, as much as I possibly could, trying to teach people how to use it, teach about the power of it. And because of that, and because I'm literally writing the content to teach people how to use it, I do think of myself as a teacher as well. Um, what I am not is a data guy at all. I haven't really worked much with databases apart from what you do as a Salesforce admin, working with the custom objects and uh, dataloader.io and things like that, right? Um, I don't really know SQL very well at all. I haven't really worked with databases. I couldn't tell you what a foreign key is. I, I really don't know. Um, but I am also the person who's had to learn Data Cloud for the past few months because I am currently writing the Data Cloud in Flows badge, which will be going up at Dreamforce. We're gonna we're gonna debut it there. Um, so I, I've kind of been forced into the mix. I've had to learn from the ground up what data cloud is by going through documentation, talking to our, our subject matter experts inside the company, um, and putting a, putting a picture together. So what is data cloud exactly, and why is this going to be important to you? Well, it is a series of tools that allow you to work with external data, data that's not in Salesforce, bring it into Salesforce, and marry it up, use it with your Salesforce data. Now, I say work with, that's an important distinction. We're not importing the data. Data Cloud itself does not actually pull the data in. You'll still need something like MuleSoft or uh, API to ingest the data. Um, so just an important distinction, because it's very easy to assume, Oh, especially with Salesforce marketing, right? Oh, it does all the things. It's a magic data tool. There's some caveats always, right? Um, it is a place to store all that external data. There's actually data lakes that exist within Data Cloud now uh, that are accessible via Salesforce. Uh, once it's in the data lakes, you can sort it, you can massage it, you can reconcile it against your data, your other external data, against your Salesforce data. And because it now is going to be living in your Salesforce org, you now have access to Salesforce automation, like Flow, for that external data. And that's probably why you're all here, because the moment we get into Salesforce automation, all your bosses and the, your C-suite, they're going to be asking, hey, this is Salesforce, right? This is your thing, right? You should be setting up our data cloud, even if you're not a, a data person. Uh, so it, it, it is going to be a skill set you, you may have to learn. Um, and the problem is, it can be really confusing to admins because it, everything is kind of set up more in the way of a data tool rather than a Salesforce tool. We're used to doing things, configuring things through the setup menus, right? And through, you know, object manager and things like that. With Data Cloud, you're not really configuring it through there. It's actually in the main user UI because a lot of data admins are not Salesforce admins, so they wanted to make it accessible to people who don't have access to setup, right? The data structures are similar to Salesforce, but just different enough to be confusing. You're going to see some things that are kind of like custom objects, but kind of not. And it's just enough to throw you off, potentially. Um, the way you access data, uh, looking at it, reviewing it, the automation, it is fundamentally different. It is going to make you go, what? But it's the way it is for data purposes. And then, of course, the UI, the documentation, uh, the training, the, uh, the trailhead badges, they're all set up for data people to learn how to use Data Cloud. So it's not necessarily coming at it from a perspective of, I know admin things. I, have, I speak admin language. There's no translation currently for admin language to data language. Um, 
So the actual progression for data in Data Cloud, this is kind of the key foundation, is you're going to have your external data, and then you're going to create data streams. And those data streams will enable you to place the data into data lake objects. And then the mapping that you define sorts those and puts those into data model objects. The data model objects are kind of the actual what you're going to use most of the time after you've set up everything else. Sorry, I am, I am going to go a little bit quick. I will try to make the slides available. There's better details on the next slide. <laughs> OK, so your data is kind of like Lego. In that, it, from a Salesforce perspective, Salesforce doesn't know what all this data is coming in, right? It's just a jumble. They're all useful. You can assemble it into all sorts of very useful things, but Salesforce just sees it like this. So we have to set up these structures. So data streams are the funnels. This is actually saying you're going to, you, basically, you make a data stream to receive one data table, and that um, is going to be essentially the funnel, the receiver. Um, whoops. You can even set up custom formula fields on a data stream so that it's just like a, a Salesforce uh, formula field that you put on, a, on an object uh, in that you can essentially look at the data that is coming in and make a new field that is based off of that data, right? Data, for every data stream you create, Salesforce will automatically create a data lake object, just automatically, as soon as you get it set up. And this is the place that stores the raw, unchanged data. Okay? And it keeps it in those data lakes. Um, and, and this is basically kind of like a, a backup copy, right? Because we're going to do massaging and sorting and everything later. This way, because it exists in the data lake, there's still an untouched version. Once you have data lake objects, you're going to create mapping. The mapping is the instructions. These are the things that, are, that you're going to set up that are going to say, all right, well, we have data in this data lake object, but we need it to be useful in this manner. Um, one of the things that you'll see is the customer 360 model. You may see it called that in various documentation training materials. That's basically a core user, or I'm sorry, a core person structure. Person data is going to be organized in a specific way. And it's going, to be, it's going to throw you off at first, but we'll come back to that. Um, and then the mapping will actually define how things come into data model objects. This is the actual, like I said, this is the actual usable stuff. It's sorted. It's transformed. Uh, it can be accessed by other areas of Data Cloud and Salesforce. And you are going to have a one-to-many relationship as well between data lake and data model. It's going to be, it's going to sort in a way you don't really expect, OK? And I'll show you what that means. The other thing you need to know about this is that all of this is happening on a schedule. When Data Cloud receive, da, da, let me rephrase. Data Cloud is set up to receive things on a schedule. It actually will run and import the data every so often, every hour, every four hours, every day. You will define this schedule. But it's just something to keep in mind that just because a change is made immediately in an external data source doesn't mean it's immediately reflected over in Salesforce, over in Data Cloud. There is going to be a delay, and it depends on whatever you set up. All right, let's actually take a look inside Data Cloud and see what it looks like. All right, so here we have, oh, let me make this a bit bigger for you. All right. So notice our interface. It, it's an app, right? We have a data cloud app. And we have tabs up at the top for all the different types of configuration. You can almost think of it like a, a pivot version of the setup menu. Instead of coming down the side, we're coming across the top, right? So first, we have our data streams. These are the actual funnels, right, that are ingesting the data. And we have multiple things set up. Notice it says, this is, uh, we, we've done a little bit of uh, Falsif falsification here. Um, it says the data connector is coming through a CRM. I don't actually have this connected to actual external data sources right now. You can actually use uh, Data Cloud to bring in the data, the Salesforce data from the org your Data Cloud is actually sitting on, and then in that way it makes it easier to marry up all your data. So that's what these are. These are pseudo objects, but we're going to pretend like they're external objects. Um, so let's take a look at one of these. This is, this is for a, a, a resort. 
uh, a fake resort that we've made, the Coral Cloud Resort, and they have guests. Guests are their customers, right? Guests are in an external database. So this is the data stream to bring over the information. And we can see, I mean, this, this looks kind of similar, right? We have a series of fields because that's what data is, right? It's stored in columns, rows, fields. So for all intents and purposes, this is very uh, similar. Then we have the data lake objects. Remember, for every data stream we create, we're going to automatically create a data lake object. It looks exactly the same. We have another one for external guest. And this is going to look very similar. And this might throw you off. You might think, why? Why do we have this? Why do we have this duplication? Data stream and data lake, they look identical. From an admin perspective, yeah, that's kind of weird. It's an abstraction that's kind of necessary from a data standpoint, from, from a data management standpoint. It's one of these things we just kind of have to be like, OK, all right, I don't fully understand why, but we'll go with it. <laughs> now that we have the data lake objects, we have the mapping. So we access that here. There's a data mapping section. We'll click Review, and we'll take a look. So on the left side, we can see this is the, these are the fields that uh, are from that external data, and they're mapped over on the right side to the data uh, model objects, right? The data cloud places where these are available. And again, this is the guest. These are customers. These are people. What we don't have over here, we're not mapping it over to a guest um, object. We're not mapping it to a contact object. We're mapping it to three objects, content point, contact point email, contact point phone, and individual. The individual, this is, that, this is that 360, that customer 360 model I was telling you about. The individual is kind of your core information, their name, other identifying information. Um, but then contact point email and contact point phone are literally their email address and their phone. And they're stored in separate objects because that's how we're going to resolve and reconcile that with phone and email data coming from other sources, from Salesforce, from other databases. By putting them in separate objects, it makes it easier to put them all together and then reconcile them later. Um, one thing I do want to point out is that this, this right here, this guest ID, this is the unique identifier that you're going to have in your external database, right? The external, external database says, this person is ID number 1008, blah, 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 right? We're going to make sure that's mapped to something called the party field. And it's not party, woo, party. It's not like that. It's more like party the first part, party the second part. It's essentially saying party as in an individual, a person. Um, so this is the way to store in data cloud what the ID is of the person that is associated with this email address or this phone. And it's going to be the same. We're also mapping uh, the guest ID to the individual ID. So the individual ID will also be the same. So we have this kind of unification, right? The party, the individual ID, these things are going to be the same IDs. So it makes it easier to marry this data up later. Now, lastly, uh, we're going to take a look at the data explorer. Remember I said we can't look at data the same way. There, there's not a way that you can pull up a list view of all the things and then click into it and see the fields the same way we would a Salesforce record. That doesn't really exist. Instead, what we have is the data explorer. Um, so we can look at the various types of data here. Uh, we'll say data model object. And let's go look at the, well, hang on a second. There is no external guest because this is a data model object, right? The data lake object for external guest does exist, but not the data model object, because remember, in our mapping, we didn't map it to a, an external guest. We mapped it to individual and contact point email and contact point phone. So there's a parallelism here, right? So we'll take a look. These are the actual, this is the data you can see. Um, and you can see a bunch of Salesforce contacts. You can see that they have the, ooh, uh, they have the actual IDs. And then, uh, then here, this is the external data. They have their individual IDs there. So this is the way that you would actually browse the data and see what's in there. All right, I'm running low on time. So we're going to speed run the rest of this. All right, so what do we actually do with all this data? Data transforms. This is a way of doing bulk transformations. Einstein, AI, right? Everybody's been keeping up with all the stuff, right, about AI. Uh, and, and so you can utilize it as part of that. Segmentation and augmentation, activation, these are marketing things, basically separating into groups of people based on certain criteria and activating marketing journeys based on those. 
reports and dashboards. You're in Salesforce. You'll actually have the ability to access reports and dashboards for this sort of thing. Data kits, this is the ability to take that configuration, that mapping, the streams and everything that, I, that were created, and move it over to another Salesforce org. Because you might be connecting Salesforce org to Salesforce org. It might not be Salesforce org to something like Postgres or AWS. It might be just another Salesforce org that you want to combine. So the data kits are a way to move your configuration over. And then list, field, list, views and few, bleh, list views and fields, this is what it sounds like. You can actually take your data cloud data from an external database and surface it on a Salesforce record so that anybody who can see that record could access it. So for example, if you had like a customer loyalty level that's in a separate database, like they're a diamond member, but that's kept in a separate database, you could actually surface that on their contact record uh, without, having the, without the user having to actually go dig it up anywhere. And if you want to actually try that out, there is a badge that actually has you do that. Connect Data Cloud to Copilot and Prompt Builder. And it does Prompt Builder too. It doesn't I sign it's the whole thing, but it actually does the list views portion. It's, it's really kind of cool. All right. Let's talk a bit about insights. Again, I'm going to speed run this. Um, so calculated insights, these are basically ways of creating calculations that automatically run based on the data cloud data. They're stored in something called calculated insight objects. And most of the time, they're not going to want you to worry about that because it's really back end. But as an admin, as a flow maker, you might, have to act, you might have to understand this. What it does is it's creating one record per metric. So if you have a metric that's like total lifetime value of a customer, then that's going to go in one record per person, and then if that total lifetime value changes, then the record will be updated, right? Um, lifetime customer value is a good example of this. Um, as opposed to streaming insights. Streaming insights are slightly different. Uh, they're also SQL driven, uh, but they are taking snapshots of your data, and they're actually storing one record per snapshot. So like, if you have something set to look at the total number of uh, page views every f uh, in the past five minutes, it's going to make a new record every five minutes rather than updating the existing record. And this is more for analyzing engagement data like page views and, and uh, things like that. The important thing to know is that SQL is actually a really important skill. There is a, a GUI builder uh, for, uh, for insights, but even then, if you don't understand SQL, it is difficult to understand because you have to understand uh, keys and joins and things like that. OK, uh, going real fast to identity resolution. Identity resolution. So uh, this is the idea that you have people in your external database and people in your Salesforce database. Salesforce doesn't necessarily know who's who. You might have all your ordered data that's you know, sorted and everything, but it doesn't understand that one person is another person by default. You have to set it up so that it actually knows that this data for this person is actually the same as this data for this person. Ideally, you want it to be like this, uh, a way where everything is all together kind of in a ring, kind of in a key ring, right? Something that keeps track of everything in one place so that you can access it. Um, this, is, <laughs> this is complicated. This is a good point to take pictures. Um, this is essentially how it works. There's going to be the contact point uh, records, uh, and eventually they will connect to this unified individual. This is your main one person per record, um, and then all those things will link into that. Uh, and you may have to deal with that at some point when you're building flows. OK, so now let's get to the actual flow stuff. Uh, what can you actually do with flows of data cloud? You can retrieve data cloud data, right? Um, it's going to be the same as retrieving data from Salesforce. You're going to use the get records elements. Um, and you can, but you can retrieve da uh, data from the DMOs, the data model objects, or the calculated inside objects. And it will show you specifically, it says get records from Salesforce or get records from data cloud. There are some restrictions. We're going to get to that. Um, you can also trigger a flow to run when a data cloud data, when data, cloud data changes. Um, you can trigger from DMO changes, the actual change to the model, or when the value of a calculated insight changes. Um, not streaming insights, though. Too much data happening. It, they don't have the bandwidth for that. Um, and again, this will be when the sync happens. It'll trigger when that sync happens. So again, if something happens in the external data, if the sync doesn't happen for two hours, the trigger won't happen for two hours. All right, let's actually take a look at some of these flows. All right, so here we have a flow that I have built already. It's a record trigger flow. What it's doing is it's going and grabbing uh, contact information. Um, 
This is basically saying when a contact is created, we want to go get data from Data Cloud and use it to update the contact because we, the, the, the Data Cloud data, the external data, may have information that the contact doesn't. Um, notice that I have this actually set up. It's a little bit differently. Everything is in the run asynchronously path, right? You may not have used that before because if you look at the configuration, it says down here, include a run asynchronously path to access an external system. That's a bit misleading. You can do the run asynchronously path for anything. It's basically, if you're familiar with coding at all, it's the same thing as an at future call. It doesn't have to be for external. The reason you have to do it when you're right, uh, getting data cloud data is because Salesforce is, it's, it's not the same, it, it can't access it as quickly as it can Salesforce data. So it basically won't allow you to put get records getting from data cloud in the run immediately path. Um, one thing I will point out, um, what I'm doing is this is I'm going to get the external ID, remember that unique ID, and I'm saving it to the contact. If you can at all somehow save those external IDs from your external databases in your Salesforce contacts, that will save you so much trouble because you'll be able to, when you're going in your flows and you're doing get records, you know, go get the, the contact where the external ID equals this, so much easier than having to go through that massive uh, flow chart with all the contact points and the United or uni unified individual. That's a headache. Uh, if you can just store the simple external ID directly in your contact, it'll make things 10 times easier. And here's an example of the other type of flow. This is a data cloud triggered flow. It's just going to be one of the options when you're creating a new flow. You basically say um, trigger off of here or trigger off a reservation that's been updated so that it's canceled so that we can cancel other records inside Salesforce that line up with it. I, I, and notice they say, you know, Salesforce CRM, Salesforce CRM, nothing here is unusual. It's just that the only unusual thing is we're data cloud triggered and you have to know uh, what you're actually triggering off of there. Apart from that, it's just like any other flow. All right, so we're almost done. Um, things you got to watch out for. Um, data cloud records that you uh, have, that you, if you're in a flow and you're trying to pull down multiple data cloud records, you know how when you're pulling down multiple records with the get records normally in Salesforce and it puts them into a collection for you? That collection, flows aren't really good at dealing with it at all right now. They really can't. Um, you've got lots of restrictions. You can't loop through them. For some reason, it won't let you save the flow if you're trying to loop through a, a data cloud collection. Uh, they don't work with screen components. Data tables don't recognize them. Multi uh, checkboxes don't recognize them, things like that. So unfortunately, pulling down a collection of data and then doing something with it in flow isn't really an option right now. You can't even create collection variables for those types of objects at all either. Um, we already talked a bit about this. Uh, you can't put things in the get immediately, the run immediately path. If you're uh, getting data cloud data, you have to put it in a schedule path or the run asynchronously path. And then uh, keep in mind, you can only do mapped fields, only fields that are in data model objects, not in data lake objects. You won't be able to access them. If you want to learn more about data cloud, Trailhead has a bunch of stuff. And again, it is, a, it is quite data model, data person centric, um, but it is still a good place to start. Uh, there is a module that I would recommend actually to start first. It's the customer 360 data model because it explains the core concept of person data and how that model is organized. Uh, that will be a foundation that you can do, the explore data cloud, get hands on with data cloud as a trailer has a bunch of projects, and then enhance data cloud as if you, enhance data, data cloud as if you want to do insights. I got through it in time. Uh, <laughs> so close. Um, I think we have one minute if somebody has a question. OK, otherwise, I'm just going to be here. I'm going to be hanging out. Uh, and I'll be at lunch. So feel free to come and find me. Ask any questions you've got. If it's about data cloud, I'll do my best to answer. Like I said, I'm data, not a data cloud guy, but I've had to learn a lot. So uh, thank you, everybody.